Hey, everybody, and welcome back once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 28, John and Wendy Talk to Melanie Peacock. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How are you, John? I'm well. We were talking a little bit right before we started recording, and the timing on this episode couldn't be better. Yeah. Uh, I am going to be in South Dakota next week. Woohoo! I, I, oh, we've got some plans. <laughs> oh, I, I'm so excited. I had a, a tremendous opportunity that came out of a presentation, a webinar that I did to speak at the Sioux Falls Development Foundation, what they're calling the Win and Workforce Summit. And so I will be speaking on social and media and recruiting, and kind of giving folks a primer on what's out there and super excited to do that. That's going to be on August 23rd. I'll do that in the afternoon there in Sioux Falls. And that morning, I believe I'm going to be speaking in Brookings too. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna double double duty up here, John. So we've we've started a uh, business uh, breakfast thing here in Brookings to uh, get some HR information out to some of our small businesses, uh, kind of reach them. So we're partnering with the chamber, and since John's coming out, and one of the things that they've asked for is uh, more information, more help on recruitment, specifically um, social media. And who better to talk about it than John? So it's going to be a busy day for John, but it's going to be awesome. So I, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm excited as well. Never been to South Dakota, so I get to, <laughs> I get to see Wendy. We will probably do some recording. You never know. Yeah. But super excited. There will uh, there will be beer. Well, we'll just put that I, out there. There I, will be beer. I like the sound of that already. <laughs> I like the sound of that already. Well, I don't want to keep our guests waiting. I am yes. going to say before you introduce her, though, that she is now my favorite Canadian even above my favorite band uh, from Canada, the band Rush. She is my favorite Canadian now, and I will let you make the introduction and we will get started. Melanie is, uh, I, you know what, I'll say she's my favorite Canadian too, um, but I don't have the love of Rush that John does. Maybe it's not as big of a deal, but still enjoyed meeting Melanie at, uh, at Sherm 18 and hanging out with her there, so um, that was fantastic. Melanie is a chartered professional in human resources with almost 30 years of experience in human resources management. She runs her own boutique consulting firm called uh, Double M Training and Consulting and is also an associate professor at the Bissett School of Business at Mount Royal University. She brings a rich and diverse set of experiences to her work and has guided HR teams to create and implement numerous processes and systems that enable organizations to engage their employees and achieve strong results. She is also an active local, provincial, and national media contributor and has been a board member for CPHR Alberta. She was recognized by them with a Distinguished Career Award in 2014. Most recently, Melanie has been elected as the president of the Mount Royal University Faculty Association and has recently celebrated Canada Day, which I just love that that's right around the 4th of July. We should just have one great big giant North American celebration, don't you think? So welcome, Melanie, to our podcast. And our first question is, what is in your glass tonight? Well, I was going to say, and thank you, Wendy and John, for having me here. And my glass is a lovely Grenache blend. But after that beautiful introduction, I think my glass is full of just love and appreciation. <laughs> Seriously, like, wow, I, I don't Aww. think I've ever been called somebody's favorite Canadian, even if I'm the only Canadian you know. I mean, <laughs> take that, Michael J. Fox. There you go. Take that, Justin Trudeau. Um, no, thank you. That was a lovely introduction, and I'm just thrilled to be here, glass of wine in hand. I invite people to check out my tweet that I sent out just prior to chatting with you and look for my Twitter handle at double, the word double, M Peacock, and they can learn more about the wine that I'm enjoying and the description mm -hmm. of it is posted because it talks a lot about how I feel about being here with you and John tonight Wendy Aww. about deep appreciation and the creativity and having dreams come true and it's just neat so thank you oh and that's why I pick out that's one of the ways I pick out wine is by what the label says so I would definitely be picking this one up just based on that so thank you for sharing it wonderful I have been wrong all these years I always looked at the price tag <laughs> but I don't drink a lot of wine, so that might be why. But but no, Melanie. Uh, in all seriousness, I know uh, I know many, I know I don't want to say I know many many Canadians. I know a few, and you truly are my favorite. And I, and I'm very curious though. You know, we've gotten to spend some time together. But how exactly did you get started in a career in human resources? 
Well, Wendy and John, I love to tell people, you know, I knew exactly what I was doing. I had a plan and I had a strategy and I knew all about human resource management and it was always my goal. <laughs> I, I was fortunate enough to fall into this profession and then I fell in love with it. You know, it really is a calling and thank goodness when they called, I didn't say wrong number and hang up. <laughs> um, it was... It was just a blessing how I fell into it. I took many sociology and psychology courses in my undergraduate degree and knew I was always interested in people and what made them tick and started to understand how that impacts organizations and how they work. And then I tell the story about, you know, there's sometimes I can't remember what I did yesterday, but I remember this <laughs> deeply from my childhood. I remember sometimes my dad coming home from work and my dad who just turned 91, by the way, bless his heart, was a, is a kind soul who never had a bad thing to say about anybody. But sometimes he'd look sad. Or I would hear him say things about how he was disappointed about what was happening at work. And I used to think, and I sometimes I still wonder, why does work have to suck? <laughs> and honestly, that's why I went into HR. I had the opportunity in between my summers in my Master's of Business Administration program, I was offered two jobs, one in marketing, one in human resources. And you know, that's the two paths in the woods kind of story. If I always wonder what would have happened if I'd gone into marketing. You might have seen some cool commercials from Canada, but <laughs> 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 or maybe not. But you know, the person who interviewed me for the HR job seemed really keen and she wanted to learn a lot and invited me to join the team and learn, even though it was just a summer position. She didn't frame it like that. And even then, as a good foray into recruitment and selection, I learned very quickly, you don't just do the job, it's who you work for that matters, which even heightened my excitement about HR management. And well, the rest, as they say, is history or herstory in my <laughs> situation. And yeah, I just fell into it and honestly fell in love with it. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that story. You had the opportunity to present at SHRM 18 about HR in Canada. Tell us about that experience at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. on a Monday morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always tell people I'm very, very blessed because I really don't have what I'd call a bucket list. Although I did get a big bucket of Garrett popcorn when we were in Chicago, <laughs> brought that home to the fam, and that was great. So took the bucket off my bucket list, so to speak. Um, but one of the things I've always wanted to do is to speak at Sherm. You know, and while I might not say it was a bucket list item, because I just, it's not how I think and how I work, but it's something I always wanted to do. So how was it? It was a, a dream come true, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, the preparation leading up to it, all the way back into the previous July when I submitted my speaker proposal, around November when I found out and my entire family found out when they heard me screaming with excitement from my home <laughs> office <laughs> that I was accepted and invited to come and speak at SHRM 2018. The process, it is a well-oiled machine, my friends. They take really? very good care of the speakers. They are organized. They are efficient. They give you deadlines. They give you dates. They set you up for success. Uh, they respond to your questions in a timely manner. It was just a joy and a delight. And as we all know, from those of us that have been at the conference, the SHRM staff are just exceptional. So I just a huge shout out to them and the people that were involved. The actual session itself, I'll be honest, guys, I gulped when I went seven o'clock on a Monday morning. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm a morning person myself, I am, and I was just like, wow, this is going to be intense. Okay, myself and the 20 people that show up, it'll be cool. It'll still yeah, be exciting. Yeah. I'll talk about HR in Canada. Uh, so I didn't sleep well the night before because I was worried <laughs> about missing one of my three. Yeah, some people call it being anal retentive. I call it being organized. One of my three <laughs> alarm clocks that I set wouldn't go off, but they all did. Anyway, up I am at 4.30, even before the first alarm. I'm at McCormick Place by 6.00. By the way, it's hard to get a cup of coffee even at six o'clock in the morning in Chicago. So there I was, and off we go to the races. And I'm going to say about 240 people showed up, which oh, speaks wow. to the commitment of the people in our profession, the interest they have in global HR issues, the passion they have for learning. It was just a true honor and a privilege and a pleasure to speak. Um, the other thing I want to speak about, too, that didn't wasn't readily apparent to me when I started this whole process is just how I would be 
embraced and I can't think of another word that better describes it Wendy and John like how I was embraced by the HR community and some of the friends I've made online who specifically showed up to support me and give me encouragement during the presentation at 7 a.m. on a Monday morning oh yeah you know, it was just delightful, and I am so appreciative and so blessed by that. And it's really, you know, for someone who loves to chat, and I'm a writer, uh, I find the words hard to acquire to properly describe the feeling and just that level of support and encouragement. You know, I know there's been things online lately. We've been talking about the hashtag HR Tribe and how some people worry about being excluded and what does that mean? And there's been some great posts and how we do have to respond to this and not ignore it. But what I'll share with you as someone who's grown up, yes, in a great country, and I love Canada, but I've experienced exclusion and I've experienced, as we all have, I'm sure, at some times in our lives, some negative things. But I found this, not just the hashtag HR tribe, but just the HR community and the online community so welcoming and so supportive. And I would like to reciprocate that to anyone in any way possible. So I'm through this and you and John, Wendy, you and John are just a tremendous examples of this, of being so welcoming and so supportive to so many people that I know we can continue to reach out to people and I would like to give back. And through this, I'm sharing that and inviting people to reach out. If you ever feel excluded, well, connect with us and we'll find some way to make sure that you're welcomed in. Melanie, you've taught for quite some time and we've had some other folks on the show that teach uh, you know, either full-time or part of their job. Can you talk about What changes, if any, you've seen in the student population in your time? And when you do teach, how is the focus split out? Is it a global focus? Is it more really focused on Canadian HR function? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I have definitely seen, just as we've seen workplace demographics shift, I've seen a lot of change in the student demographic population. Certainly more of a gender split and more of a nationality, culture, religion, language array than we would see previously. But more importantly than what we would typically define as diversity, I've seen a lot of change in the way students approach learning and what they expect from their learning institutions and what they expect from their teachers. So for example, my area of research for my doctoral studies was blended delivery. So that's using online and face-to-face learning, combining them in some fashion so that students are not always sitting in a classroom to learn. Fascinating, again, how we can use technology to enhance learning opportunities, and that's been a huge change. Just as we've seen social media and technology, as we're seeing blockchain technology is going to change the way we practice human resource management. We talk a lot about artificial intelligence and robotics. Anyway, all of that in its own way, is impacting the way students learn and the way that I have to teach. And I think that's just great that we're kept on our toes. Uh, I think you'll be interested, a couple of years ago, someone was suggesting that we have to start doing podcasts as teachers. And I was like, (laughs) what? I'm not doing no podcast? What do you mean? (laughs) And now the thought of, oh, goody, they could have to listen to me as they go to sleep. Just what everybody wants, oh, right? Yeah. Once upon a time, there, there was go. a disability claim. And <laughs> <laughs> so there's been lots of change, not just in the student demographic, but in how we reach them and how we connect with them. I'm putting this out there now, Melanie. If you ever need a podcast producer, you know who to contact. That, that <laughs> I would be more than happy to help you put something together like that. Thank you. You're on the list. Oh, awesome. Melanie, you use a lot of a gift on Twitter. I love seeing um, what you're able to find. How, how do you keep up with, with getting the, the right ones out there? Well, as our friend Jeff Polkowski would say, because he and I are the king and queen of puns, right? And we're always going back right. and forth. He, he would say, I'm gifted. <laughs> when it comes to... <laughs> I have to share with you, John and Wendy, and I know you've talked about, you know, how we became connected and our relationship and our community. I think you'll get a chuckle out of this as well, the listeners, that it really wasn't that long ago. And I share this with you vulnerably and in full transparency. It wasn't that long ago when I said, I don't want to get an iPhone. Why do I need an iPhone? (laughs) (laughs) Like I wasn't like I'm one of these, including as a person who's written a book 
about change management and I teach change management, I'm not an early adopter. And so there I go kicking and screaming to get an iPhone. And as I start to learn to use it and how to use it to connect with people and how to use Twitter, I was hooked and I understand the power of connection, which is a power of mine. So yeah, why do I use the gifts? Because it's part of that connection, right? It draws people into the communication. It also in my mind, shows a little bit of transparency. While I try to be professional and respectful, I always say to people, I take my work seriously, but not myself. And so I hope my <laughs> gifts reflect that, that it can, you know, we can take our work seriously, but we can also add some lightheartedness and some fun to what we do. Because isn't that what life's all about? Again, this is coming full circle. Why does work have to suck? <laughs> <laughs> we can still <laughs> accomplish a lot and laugh and enjoy each other. And I think feel through the gifts that I'm sharing a little bit of myself mm -hmm. and giving a window into what I find enjoyable and hoping to brighten other people's days. So I've just learned how to, you know, use those fast fingers, do the finger warm ups and, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you know, pouring the odd glass of wine helps keep the fingers limber. So it's all good. Yes, it does. It does. Well, and you know, it, it seems like you can sarcasm comes over a little bit easier if there's a gif involved, I've found. <laughs> Since you can't write sarcasm, you know, can't write in that sarcastic voice. Well, Melanie, it is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show, the Half Hour Question Connection. So, do you remember how you first connected with us? No. <laughs> no, and I, th I don't remember how I connected with the wonderful Wendy and John, and I think that speaks so well to who you both are and how open you are and how readily and easily you allow other people to get to know you. Uh, I want to share, too, that, Wendy, I enjoyed seeing your Disrupt HR talk, and you talked about networking and being an introvert. And I sat as an extrovert listening to that, thinking, fascinating. There's an introvert who is just so lovely and welcoming. And I'm sure it's through the online community and perhaps through Next Chat or through Twitter conversations that we all connected and started to exchange communication and get to know one another. But the fact that I don't remember exactly how, I think is a good thing. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree. I love how you put that. Melanie, talk to us a little bit about how networking's helped in your career and what's been a really effective way of networking for you. Well, it's a bit ironic that given that I study and have a passion for teaching blended delivery courses, so in other words, partially face-to-face -face and partially online, the power of the face-to-face -face just cannot be underestimated or undervalued. I think we found that even at SHRM, the fact to meet people face to face and, you know, actually meet as, as the kids would say, IRL in real life, <laughs> uh, you know, that networking and using social media and it's absolutely important and using blog posts, I will never, never minimize the value of that or the importance of it, but you have to get out and you actually have to meet people and there are ways and tools and if you don't know, watch Wendy's Disrupt HR talk. She gives you <laughs> great ways to connect with people before you connect with them. But networking for me, a quick, quick story is when I got my very, very first, what I call significant role in HR, there were... 300, I'm trying to remember the exact number, I think it was 385, it was close to 400 people that applied for the job. And I would love to tell you, my resume was fantastic, and I was a superstar, and of course they were going to interview me. That's not true. The only <laughs> reason I got an interview is that coincidentally, I happened, the two people that were charged with or tasked with reviewing these 385 applications, both independently had happened to meet me at HR networking events in the previous weeks. Two separate events. And as they're looking through the things going, I remember this woman. She can string a sentence together. Let's interview her. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy said, yeah, I remember her. She's kind of yappy, but whatever. <laughs> Let, we have to pick four people. Next. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> you know? goodness. And so I wouldn't have even got that first interview, which led to a first dynamic job in the oil and gas industry. Surprise, surprise, in Alberta. But that really set my HR career off and running. And so that to me really speaks to the power of networking. The other thing I'll share about just, again, being professional and respecting boundaries, it's still important to connect with people and share a little bit about yourself. I remember getting together with people that I worked with many, many years ago, we had to celebrate a previous boss's retirement. And I'll share with you and your listeners that while we were excited about the work we accomplished, and we did many, many good things while we worked as a team, 
20 years later when we got together, we didn't talk about our work. <laughs> we talked about, remember this party? Remember this get-together? Remember this luncheon? Remember when this thing happened and how we supported each other? Remember when so-and-so got married? It was the people, it was the connective things that we remembered and that we relished 20 years later. So if you're thinking about networking and you're thinking, do I really have to go? Do I have to get out? And trust me, even as an extrovert, I'm a homebody. It might sound like a contradiction. I have to force myself to get out of the house. It's important. And there are ways around it. And, you know, go up and just say hello. <laughs> and, and it's a beginning. Melanie, who do you read or follow for HR Insight? I'm a big fan of Dave Ulrich. I think that Dave has interesting insights. He's always looking at things from different perspectives and through different lenses. I don't always necessarily agree with absolutely everything he says, and that's good too, because if I agreed with something that somebody said all the time, then I think it's not challenging me. So he's somebody that I'm a big fan of. Other than that, believe it or not, I've found that reading a lot of the posts on LinkedIn and Twitter are actually a way for me, they're not academic, right? So I can get away from some of the academic material and start to understand some of the leading edge or current issues. And that's another reason I found social media to be such a great tool and resource because just thumbing through that, and so I'm being evasive, I'm being a good politician here, right? I'm not answering your question directly because I find there's so many numerous people and sources out there and sometimes the person on the street and their posts and their ideas can just be an amazing resource that shouldn't be undervalued. Melanie, how do you enjoy giving back to the HR community? I have to say, John, I've been so blessed. I sat on the board of directors of CPHR Alberta, which was previously the Human Resources Institute of Alberta. I've done a lot of volunteer work in different capacities. And what I found, and again, sometimes I've sighed and thought, I don't want to do this. I don't have to have, I don't have time. Does this mean I have to leave the house? <laughs> um, that every time I've pushed myself to do something and wondered if I would have the ability or the resources to do it, I've received more back than I ever gave. And just the meeting people, the forming connections, the learning from them, ultimately, and don't tell me if I'm wrong, because this is what helps me sleep at night. <laughs> I just feel so blessed to have been an educator. And I'm hoping in some ways that that'll be my ultimate legacy, that I'll have made a difference in my students' lives. Yeah, yeah, I read the evaluations. Spoiler alert, not all of them like me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. It is okay. I'm not everyone's kappa, as my parents would say, not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, but... For those that I have helped, and there have been many, many wonderful students who have shared this with me, and I have what I call my little happy container where I've kept the cards and the notes that I've received from students. And ultimately, in, in a lot of ways, even though it's been a paid position, a lot of it still is on my own time, on my own dime. So, you know, I feel like I've given back in that way. Awesome. Melanie, what is your favorite movie? <laughs> Ooh, I, I, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm laughing because I'm trying not to sing. Oh. <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> What's the insurance on your microphones here <laughs> if I start belting out? <laughs> so for those of you that haven't guessed, it's uh, The Sound of Music. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I've only seen it a mere 22 times, and I've actually been to the gazebo where uh, one of the famous iconic scenes was filmed, and I've actually danced around that gazebo when, it, when oh. you still could go in it. You can't anymore, apparently. But I danced around that gazebo in the rain, no less. How nice of Mother Nature to contribute. And uh, another spoiler alert, I am not 16 going on 17, but enough <laughs> of that. <laughs> How about your favorite musician or band? You know, again, I don't have, I tend to listen to a lot of different things. Um, I love listening to your posts and Steve Brown talking about Rush. And I, you know, I love Phil Collins. I love Maroon 5. I've will listen to some jazz, but there's not one particular group or artist I like. I'm all over the map. Maybe a little bit like my personality. Some people might say I'm scattered. I, pro I choose to think I'm interesting and diverse. Well, you and Anish Aravind share Phil Collins. And you and Amanda Brunson share Maroon 5. Yeah. Well, there we go. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How about a favorite TV show? I tend to like comedies because it um, 
you know, after a long day of work, sometimes if I have time to watch TV, it's nice to unwind. So the Big Bang Theory, again, it's interesting talking about work and I love watching the interactions and what they do at the university and how they, especially there was one great episode when they were trying to get a tenure track position, which as somebody who works in academia, I found that quite amusing. And it's funny <laughs> because it's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to admit it's true. And then yeah, sometimes I watch the odd crime show and then uh, as my adults will say why do you watch that mom then you don't sleep <laughs> <laughs> but then I sing you know raindrops on roses in my head and it's all good and we're well Melanie I always try to find connection with our guests as far as their favorites and I have to say that in 1970 something I won't say when uh, I was in a production of the sound of music uh, in elementary school as one of the uh we i was like a chorus kid i you know saying i was not one of the von traps we sang edelweiss and all kinds of fun stuff and i i'm not going to say how long ago it was but it was a long time ago <laughs> and, and it's, I'm not gonna it's a either. classic isn't it it's a classic it, it my is, friend it is indeed having said that we talked about th those favorite things uh what else do you like to do outside of work a lot of people tease me, John and Wendy, because they say, do you ever not work? And a lot of what I do is work related, but I feel so blessed because I have many different things that I'm involved with and I enjoy doing. So yes, I'm an educator. Yes, I'm an HR consultant. I also do a lot of media work as Wendy, thanks again for the nice introduction. I do a lot of writing, not just blog posts. I write textbooks. So I'm also doing a lot of writing. That's all you think that's all work, but that all takes, you know, certain hours in my day. Uh, what I do like to do when I'm not doing that is I will enjoy the odd glass of wine and sometimes the even glass of wine. You know, you got to have two or <laughs> four. <laughs> Never leave it at an odd number. Um, oh. My husband and I like to go to Vegas two or three times a year. People say, why do you go to Vegas? You're not a big gambler. You don't. People watching my friends, oh my gosh, you know, just um, maybe when I retire, I'll be writing the next HR sitcom. I'll change the names to protect the <clears throat> innocent. <laughs> Between that and all the things I've seen in Vegas, maybe I'll uh, get a hit TV show or at least a good musical out of it, John. <laughs> there you go. I'll be looking for a chorus member. All right. La, uh, la, la. <laughs> so, Melanie, if you were not in HR... What do you think you'd be doing professionally? I was asked this question a couple of weeks ago, and I gave a sincere answer. Somebody gave me the look, but this was my honest answer. If I was not in HR, I would be trying to get into HR. <laughs> I would be doing whatever <laughs> I could to try and get into I realized that the more I found out about this profession, all these years later, I still love it. Do I have my moments? Yes. Do I have my frustrations? Yes. Do sometimes I wonder what am I doing? Yes. But I <laughs> still love it. And so I would be fine. I don't know what I'd be doing. I would be maybe writing Hallmark greeting cards and getting rejected. I would be <laughs> working in a local wine store, drinking their profits. I don't know. But I would be whatever I'd be doing would be trying to build a path to bring me to this profession. So it just shows how lucky I am that I've ended up here. I think you're the first person that said you'd be actively working to get in, which I think is great. Yeah. That's the first time we've heard that. I, I want to congratulate you, Melanie. You have successfully completed the question connection, the conversation at large, uh, are gushing over you as our favorite Canadian by and far away. We cannot thank you enough for taking part in the social hour and in the chat tonight. And this is your chance now for the listeners that aren't connected with you. How is the best way to reach you out there? I can be reached on Twitter at double M Peacock. So D O U B L E M Peacock. Or I'm on LinkedIn. You can find my profile as Dr. Melanie Peacock. And those are probably the two best ways to connect with me. I will always welcome connection invitations. Reach out. If you want to find out more about HR in Canada, you know, connect with me. Watch my posts. It's just great to learn from and with one another. And Wendy and John, I just can't thank you enough for including me on this uh, podcast. And just what a great joy it is to connect with you again. And spoiler alert, you're stuck with me. <laughs> Even when I become your not favorite Canadian, you're still stuck oh, with that, me. I, I'm, oh, I, I don't see it that way at all. But thank you. And how about, Wendy, how about you? What's the best way for the listeners to reach you? 
Sure. Best way is always on Twitter. I am Windle93. Also, uh, my blog, mydailyjourney.com. Daily is D as in dog, A-I-L-E-Y. Also, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Personalize the message. Let me know um, why you want to connect, and we'll uh, happy to connect that way. And, of course, every fourth Sunday of the month, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, you can find me on Twitter, enjoying the uh, HR Social Hour Twitter chat. How about you, John? You can always find me on Twitter. That's John, J-O-N, underscore Thurmond, T-H-U-R-M-O-N-D. Always happy to connect on LinkedIn. As I always ask, personalize the note. I appreciate it. If you have a comment or a question about the show or the monthly chat, send us an email, Podcast at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook. Search HR Social Hour. I know many of you are on Facebook Check us out. We do have different content there sometimes. And so like us and you can find out more about what we're doing day to day. You can find the show at hrsocialhourpodcast.podbean.com. We're on iTunes, Podbean, Podchaser, hrpodcasters.com, Google Play, TuneIn, and Spotify. And as always, if you like what you hear, rate and review. I cannot tell you what it means when we get new reviews. If we see those five-star ratings, it helps boost our visibility and continues to help us build the community at large. So, again, Melanie, thanks for being with us tonight. And for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect. Give back. And network. network. Take care, everyone. We'll see you.